Oh, hello. Um, I hope that you enjoyed my last video called Nonlinear ODE1, I think it was, in which we solved a nonlinear ordinary differential equation via a process of linearization. Uh, we are going to attempt to do the same here in this video with a slightly different ODE in which I have swapped the dependent variable y here around so that it is now a coefficient of um, its own derivative dy by dx all squared. Again, to recap, this ODE is non-linear because it contains products of the unknown dependent variable y and its derivatives, in this case, dy by dx all squared. So to attempt to solve this um, ordinary differential equation, we are going to adopt the same procedure as in the previous video, and um, I'm going to set u equal to dy by dx, which is usually what you do when there's dy by the x term, whether it's squared or not, in a non-linear ordinary differential equation that hopefully can be solved. And we see from this that if we differentiate u with respect to x, we obtain the second derivative of y also with respect to x squared this time. So, um, what we notice is that if we substitute du by dx back into um, d squared y by dx squared in equation one, um, the problem is there that we have a u and an x, or a u and an x here, um, and a y there. And we don't want three uh, variables in an ordinary differential equation. Otherwise, it effectively becomes some kind of partial differential equation. So what we want to do is to um, arrange this du by dx, kind of manipulate it so that um, we have a y term in it. And we do that by rewriting um, d squared y, let me write it down here, d squared y by dx squared as du over something times something over dx. Now this is actually the chain rule that we're using and because it's a chain rule we, we want something um, in the numerator up here that cancels with whatever it is in the denominator down there and we notice that this term here is the independent variable is y. So um, just let me erase this line up here. There we are. So what we want to be writing um, in the numerator is dy because the, independent, the, the dependent variable is y. So um, I do apologize, apologize if I got that wrong a few minutes ago. Y is a dependent variable. So we have a dy down here as well. And you can see that if we cancel them, we get back to du by dx. Uh, but of course, we don't want to do that. Um, Instead, we rewrite this as du by dy, and what is a dy by dx term? Well, we know that dy by dx here is equal to u. So, let's just get rid of those um, marks. So, we have du by dy times u, which is equal to u du by dx dy. Okay, so you've used a chain rule uh, to find the second derivative in terms of u and y, which is that. Um, and now we can proceed ahead. So if I just rewrite the original equation as d squared y by dx squared, in it, it, rewrite it in its original form um, so that we have something to um, uh, by which we can reference what we're doing, uh, then we have y uh, dy by dx all squared equals to zero. Um, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. So we can substitute this, well, let's 
move that up and show you exactly what I'm doing. So if we substitute this uh, u du by dy term here into this term, then we have u du by dy minus y times, well, we don't write this as dy by dx all squared. Um, we know that dy by dx is equal to u. Um, so we'll just put that in brackets. Um, so this is going to be u squared if you substitute that in. And let's just move this down. Now this looks like an equally complicated equation, but it isn't because we can factor out the u term and put brackets in. And inside the brackets, we have du by dy minus yu. And that is equal to zero. Right, now, there's two things that we need to do with this part of the equation. Um, first of all, either u has to be equal to zero, or this term in brackets, this differential equation in brackets, has to be equal to zero. So just let's deal with the u equals zero bit first. Um, now, we know that u is dy by dx. So that's equal to zero as well. And that implies, if we integrate it, that y equals some constant, which we'll call constant one. Now, y equals c1 is a special case of the general solution. So y equals c1 is a special case of the general, I'll just write that as general solution. There we are. Uh, of course, we need to find the general solution, and we do that by solving uh, the part in brackets now. Du by dy minus yu equals zero. So let's write that down, if I can uh, remember it. So it's du by dy minus yu equals zero. OK. And uh, I'm going to double check that. Uh, let me see. And we'll call it equation two. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down yet again and um, I'm going to write that equation down again. Uh, du by dy minus y u equals zero. Now. We can solve this by two possible methods. One is the integrating factor method. And I'm just sort of um, writing it down in abbreviated form there without too much writing. And the other is separation of the variables. So um, separation of variables. And I am going to choose the second method of separation of variables so that if we rewrite equation two as du by dy equals to yu, then we can divide both sides by u and multiply both sides by dy. So that what we get is uh, du over u equal to y dy and of course we need the integral signs in um, and then we can integrate this so um, let's just um, write this again under here then it's a little bit so um, let's let me just delete that on the right hand side and rewrite it underneath and then and then we can see exactly what we're doing. So we've got the integral of du over u equal to the integral of y dy. OK. I hope I've explained this reasonably well. Um, now, 
the integral of du over u is just the logarithm, and I put modulus signs in here, the logarithm of u, which is equal to y squared over 2 plus, now it's, you add a constant, uh, you add on a constant here, uh, you can call it anything you like, but I'm going to call it uh, log of c2, and put the modulus signs in there as well. Uh, there we are modular signs and you'll see why I've done that um, in a moment so if we take the anti-logarithm of both sides of this equation we get u equals e to the y squared over 2 uh, plus the log of c2 and of course we can separate the exponential components out so that we get e to the minus y squared over 2 times e to the log of c2. Let's make that look like a more convincing c. Uh, right, OK. Now, any exponential, <coughs> excuse me, any exponential uh, to the logarithm of a number is just that number. So what we get is u equals e to the y squared over 2 times c2 and of course this can be written more conventionally as c2 e to the y squared over 2 now we're not quite done yet because u has to be written in terms of y and x or dy by dx so we know that um, u is dy let's get that right dy uh, by dx, and this implies, if we move on to the next uh, screen, that dy by dx equals c2e to the y squared over 2. Let me make that look like a dividing sign. There we are. Now, at this point, we separate the variables again. Uh, to solve this equation uh, and so what we have on the left hand side if we divide both sides by the exponential uh, to the power of y squared over 2 we have e to the minus y squared over 2 on this side times dy and that's equal to c2 times dx on that side and of course we put the integral signs in we can leave the c2 outside the uh, integral sign that's not a very convincing integral sign so let's do it a little bit more neatly there we are okay now we're nearly finished but the trouble is with this left hand side uh, we've actually got a, a, the integral of a gaussian function here e to the minus y squared over 2 which is of the form um, e to the minus a x squared over 2 and uh, if we let e to the minus ax squared over 2 be equal to phi then when you integrate that um, it's, it, it, it isn't possible to obtain a solution to, to that integral um, in terms of elementary functions and in fact you have to use um, uh, error functions to solve it so for example um, if you want to integrate minus a x squared with respect to x, then you have to usually take the limits from minus infinity to infinity, or at least some kind of sample between limits. And that integral does become uh, pi over a. But we're not given the initial conditions here, nor the limits. So, um, we're going to have to leave this expression on the left hand side as it is uh, we'll call that for now that's equation three if you like so all we can do is integrate the right hand side of equation three so we'll leave the left hand side as it is um so we've got each uh, the integral of e to the minus y squared over 2 dy and that's equal to c2 
Um, in fact, I had the C2 outside the integral sign before, but it doesn't really matter. Times dx, and of course, if we solve, we just get e to the minus y squared over 2 dy equals C2x plus C3. Now, that really is as far as you can go at this stage without um, um, using um, initial conditions or limits on the left-hand side of this um, expression. Um, um, what I do want to add here is that we've already found one solution and we know that y is also equal to c1, which is again another special case of this solution here, um, which involves c2, x and c3. Um, and uh, that's really as far as you can go with that equation, but I hope that's been reasonably helpful. Um, again, uh, just to recap, do bear in mind that the integral of a Gaussian like this um, has to be um, obtained by using error functions. And in this case, if you took, if you knew what the initial conditions were and you, you knew what the limits were, um, you could approximate this part of the equation using this terminology here. Um, and you would get something like the root of 2 pi, uh, well, just the root of 2 pi, actually. But, but of course, you don't know what the initial conditions are um, or, or the limits. So basically, um, that's that for now. Um, I hope that's been uh, reasonably um, explanatory for you. And um, I hope you revisit for more videos. But for now, I'll bid you farewell and see you soon.